Welcome to the Art of Politics. My name is Dave Robbins, currently a state representative from Ward 9 in Nashua, soon to be an ex-state representative. But I'm here. I'm here tonight with my buddy Ken Gidge, the Democrat. We're going to be talking about politics and political issues. One of the first things that we're going to talk about is the new Democratic majority, the party of anarchy. We'll get to that in just a minute. Ken, how are you? Good to see you. The party of anarchy. The party of anarchy, you know, yes. You know, and the reason why you introduced the show is because I'm sick. Right. So you're going to beat me up. You're I, going to take advantage of me. I'm, I'm going to take advantage of an old man. And I know, an I'm sorry. An old man? I'm, I'm going to take advantage Excuse of an old man. Excuse me. Well, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm glad you won. I lost. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I lost the election. You must, no, David. You must you, re really be ill. You, you won the election. I won the, how did I win the well, election? Well, every person that I know that has taken two years off said they, that's the best <laughs> two years I've ever had. So it's, it's a forced vacation that you will love. Well, you know, one of, one of the really neat things about uh, New Hampshire at this level is uh, there really are second and third and fourth and fifth acts. I mean, we know we know people oh, who've God. you know gone out, come back, oh, gone yeah, out, come yeah, back. Absolutely. I mean, it's like getting married seven times sometimes. Well, I I was standing at the polls and somebody was. I don't know what that was. That was Did that, you hear was, that. Yeah, I, I, was, I it, was it was it no, rich, was it was was rich, that was, was your pace, that was your pace No, was that rich? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this plastique I have under here? <laughs> I like that. Uh, where was I? I'm sick. What was I saying? I'm serious. What was I saying? Uh, you were talking about standing at the polls. Oh, standing at the polls. And uh, uh, somebody was really wanted to win. And, and they really didn't want to lose. And I said, you don't understand. <laughs> I have lost twice. <laughs> And I have won twice. So today will be the day that I will either win more or have lost more. Well, you're, you become either a three-time winner or a three-time loser. No, 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 no. I have my, no, my theory is that nobody loses his first or second. Because we all know here in New Hampshire we make no money doing this. It costs us probably about thirty-five grand. We get parking tickets. You would at least think we'd get a parking place up there. Um... Oh, God, it goes on and on. Food, the cafeteria is more expensive than the restaurant outside, but you freeze your buns off if you go outside. Well, that, that's, why, that's why I bring, uh, you know, lunch. I bring my lunch. I bring and my I, lunch. And I eat it in the cafeteria, or I'll go up into one of the hearing rooms where I'm not supposed to eat. Oh, shame on you. I shame. know. Well, we have a, don't, doesn't the, the Republicans have a, a, a lunch place? Or? No. You can go downstairs, Republican or not. I I'd go right downstairs in a little coffee room. Oh yeah. Well, I, that that I that I yeah. do sometimes. And, but uh, uh, I I've even gone into. That's the, a best news there, boy. I'll tell you. I've I've even gone into the Democratic office and tried. You guys in the Democratic office the last two years had the best food. Oh yeah. Really? I mean, we you know, Speaker's office, uh, majority leaders. There was nothing like that. Nothing. No, you guys. Uh, you know, we had coffee and we had candy and. Oh, I, I saw, I saw big goods and, and stuff talk, like that. And talk, and yeah. was, it was really, really Hey, you, we're going to talk about several things, but Nashua. Oh, uh, yes, yes, broke yes. Broke the record for what? Nashua's broken many records. This is, this is out of today's union leader, and uh, not, not our hometown newspaper, but certainly one of our hometown Which, newspapers. Which, by the way, I canceled my newspaper. The Telegraph, Telegraph. or the union leader? Why did, no, why I, did you I, do that? Well, I got mad. What, okay, what did you I get was, mad about? I was very mad because, uh, I was very upset because they, you know, put Romney, you know, they, they said, we, you ought to vote for Romney. You, you know. So you're going you're gonna to cancel? I canceled it. I'm not going to. I canceled it. You canceled your newspaper because you got peaked at got a, the paper right. because they didn't editorialize the way you wanted to. Are you a to. parakeet? I just said that. <laughs> well, I, I said it, I, I said it a little better. Oh, okay, that's right. But I called them and I said, I, "No, I'm uh, I'm getting it back. I mean, it's, I'm, I can't. I want it. We've been getting it, or the family's been getting it since 1912, 1913. I, what's this? It that's old nothing. news, Ken. That's very old news. But what, what's that's, you know, that's when the Titanic went down. Do you, that's you, right. You, you, my you know, my years grandfather ago? missed the Titanic. That that is absolutely true. Well, you know, I miss the Titanic too. You miss it too. Will you get the? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, the, from the union leader, election records fall in Nashua. 
Uh, unprecedented turnout, 47,743 ballots were cast November 6th. Wow. Uh, Nashua had a turnout of voters to registered voters, 79.3% of the registered voters in the city of Nashua voted. That's, a, that's definitely a record. And you know what really, Some of them are dead. So you, know, you, you know what really pissed what? me off, though? What? Not enough of them voted for me. David, look, look, I've told you, Angie Kopka was voted in. I love Angie. I'm going to give Angie a ride, but she's 97. What's wrong with that? Well, that's my demographic. No, I love, I love Angie, and I really do love Angie. But, you know, who does she run against? Seidel? I mean, he's got a TV show, for God's sakes. I mean. I have a TV show, for God's sakes. Well, that won't work. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. All right. Let me let me just I know you've got lots of things on your mind. I'm sick. All right. Well, so, I know so be you, nice to me. Not too nice. Don't repeat yourself. This is my opportunity. Yeah, All right. We got All right. It. Here, you know, the, the I know, you know that what it, this it, is. You know what this is? What? I don't know, but here it comes again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. You have really done a number on this program on the free state movement. They, oh. are, they are not your favorite nut folks. Nutcases, absolutely They, they are nut cases. cases. Nut cases. Well, don't misunderstand me. The Democrats have theirs. Don't misunderstand There are nut cases. They're honest to God. Both the Republican and Democratic Party, there are nut cases. Well, what, what I was, uh, was going to mention was, and, and of course I mentioned this in advance, so I, uh, you, know, you had a chance to take away some of the thunder, but we have a fellow in uh, Manchester's Ward 5 named Tim O'Flaherty, and Tim O'Flaherty is a Democrat, and he is a free stater, and uh, well, he, he's saying he wouldn't vote to defund public education because there is no vibrant private system to replace it, and he realizes a welfare system is in place, so he would help a constituent navigate the system to get food stamps or unemployment benefits, and he's, he's yours. And what is wrong with that? He's a free stater, and he says what? Well, in I mean, is there spite, something? Am I missing something here? Yes, you are. What? You're, you're sick. I'm sick. Go yes, ahead. Yes, you are. We believe the free state project is extreme. Now, this this is okay. Uh, extreme. Extreme. And Tim Flaherty is one of the most extreme examples of the movement we've seen. Said Zandra Rice Hawkins, director of Granite State Progress, a very blue organization. Okay. 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 Explain it. An organizing Wait, nation is, backed by liber is... liberal vo labor voting rights and abortion rights groups. Okay. So Tim, so, on his blog. Okay. Tim has okay. said, want to do away with government want to do away with the welfare state, want to do away with all sorts right, of things. Right. Sounds kind of Republican. But then I? he just turned around and he said he would help people. That's because he is saying, I am being practical now. I am now a man with a title. I am a state representative elect. See, politics does a lot of weird things. Politics. In fact, there are people who you think are sane get crazy. This well, guy's crazy and he got sane. Well, no, you know. And you I know, mean crazy in a nice way. I mean, he's, he's our crazy. Right. Well, you know, right. um, and you know, politics makes strange bedfellows. Uh, apparently, what the hell does that mean? Well, I'll tell you, Politics sir. makes strange bedfellows. You, the problem is that if you're in politics and you're caught in any bed with anyone, you're in trouble. In the general election, O'Flaherty yeah, rents. Sasha White. In the general election, O'Flaherty ran against a fellow free stater, housemate Dan uh. Garthwaite, whom O'Flaherty called a status who favors more government than O'Flaherty. O'Flaherty's campaign literature calls for reduced spending. Uh, the backside encourages people to donate to Shire Sharing, an effort to raise money for the needy. Not a, not a problem there. In one of the more bizarre moments of the campaign, O'Flaherty wrote to Comedy Central's election internet site to say he and Garthwaite, the person he was running against, are lovers, and the election would decide certain role-playing aspects of their relationship. Are you serious? We're talking dominance and jackboots here. Are you serious? I all did, you, did you make that up, dominance no, and no, jackboots? No, no. Those words are there? Those words are there. And he's one of ours? He's, he's, one, of, he's one of yours. Well, I, I think, you know... He's a Democrat. Let's just say that given the I fact mean, that he is a, one, of, one of the state's representatives-elect... We really have to say, he's one of ours. Well, Dave, okay. Uh, 
And why don't you, why don't you go? I, I, I don't mean to monopolize the no, conversation, even though no, it's going to be my show no, soon would, when you, when like you to, pass you know. from this veil of tears. <laughs> uh, go right ahead. Speak up. Well, uh, the turnout, obviously. Uh, also, we're, they, they, I've got to tell, tell people, look, obviously in New Hampshire, we are pro-women. There is no question about that. We have a governor who's a woman. By the way, Maggie Hassan, I worked with her on uh, a committee. Mm -hmm. She is really incredible, very smart, mm -hmm. very tough, and, and very wise. Then we have Jean Shaheen. I certainly have, uh, during my radio years, have helped her in any way mm -hmm. that I could. Uh, we have Andy Custer, uh, which I certainly have uh, done what I could, and then, you know, Porter and anyone else. Oh, uh, Ayotte, I did not vote for. In fact, she shouldn't be there anyway. But there are women. And um, I was, we, we have a, a race for Speaker of the House. Now, we are the majority. The Democrats are the majority, so we will have the Speaker of the House. Democratic majority as of tonight is 221 to 179. Okay. So I am trying to convince a lady from Nashua that we have somebody, David Campbell, who's going to run, who's running for Speaker. I thought you were about to say you're trying to convince Angie Kopka to run for Speaker. No. Okay. No. Uh, Angie, yeah, she Angie could I, get, I, we, we, we might could get her voted in. Andy, I didn't mean it. It's Angie. Not I, no, no, I, I know, but you, you, you talked over me. Angie, I didn't mean it. I, 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 think only, I think only the nicest things about you. What was this all about? See, I'm so sick I forgot what I was talking about. I mean, not even on drugs. Well, it'll be a first then. Okay, what was I talking about? You were talking about the, the fem oh, okay. female Women, delegation okay. speaker and so everything else. I'm, we're obviously up here in New Hampshire. I would say the least sexist state in the United States. You have to say that. It's all women, and it's fine. I think they're all good. But we have here in Nashua somebody who is absolutely qualified, and they're all usually overqualified to do the job, who happens to be a man. And a woman from Nashua says, oh, no, I'm, not gonna, I'm voting for her because she's a woman, meaning the other person running for speaker, who's Norelli. Her name is Norelli. And I said... To her, I said, you know, that's reverse discrimination. And we're talking with other people, older ladies, who said, who were kind of embarrassed about it because this lady who's younger, who got voted in, who's going to vote for a lady because she's a lady, wasn't around where it was all men. Mm -hmm. And she can remember a man saying, I wouldn't vote for, I'm not going to vote for you, I'm going to vote for a man. And she tried to explain to this person that the women are doing the same thing the men did, and the women should know better because they were discriminated against. Mm -hmm. But this young lady had not gone through that and kind of missed that history. So it was okay for her to say, no, I'm going to vote for this person because it's a woman. And I'm going, uh, no, and we're obviously not anti-women. We've, you know, we've got even La France came on and, and, and she, no, we're not anti-women at all. So, so that was that, so that was my first say was, no, 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 you don't do that because she's a woman, you vote for the, the person who's the best. I said, you have David Campbell from Nashua. And I said, we, uh, the city ought to vote for him. It doesn't make any difference if you're women or not, simply because what this does is this puts a positive light on the city of Nashua can also bring business to the city of Nashua. Uh, Nashua becomes extremely prominent uh, when you have a Speaker of the House. Uh, and so what I said to her, I said, you're either voting for Nashua, your hometown, or you're voting for Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where she lives. And I said, you know, Portsmouth is doing pretty good up there. And she has been the speaker, then she's been the minority, and now she wants to be speaker again. And I said, you know, it's really time to move over. Do you really, do you really think that, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think, did uh, New Boston 
uh, and whatever the town that uh, wasn't there long enough. Spe David. Spe Speaker O'Brien was wasn't, from, wasn't there long enough. You know, I, I somehow don't think it, it made a great deal of difference to their uh, their vibrancy as far as economics were concerned. Well, it didn't really have time. Norelli's been around a long time, and I don't, no offense, New Boston or wherever he lives is very small. What are you going to do, give every deer a flashlight? I mean, what can you do? But if you got a, the beautiful well, water out there, like, you got great Nashua. I, I think that would make a wonderful, uh, Nashua's in the process of branding, and I think it would branding. make a, make a wonderful, wonderful, branding. you know, give every deer a flashlight in, in the New Boston like, area, where, wherever, and uh, light up the city. Four rabbits and a chicken. <laughs> Four rabbits and a chicken. Now that was last week. That was last week. All right, okay. so so I take it that that you're at this point, and by the time this program airs, With, by the, time the Democratic airs, caucus will have occurred. There, there, there will be, yes, right. All right. So uh, I do you intend to vote for David Campbell or Terry Norelli? This is my city. This is where I come from. This is where I live, David. Notice, notice now, he now, hasn't don't, answered the no, question. No, don't, no, no, no. What do you mean, who am I going to vote for? I'm just asking you a I question. I am voting for the city of Nashua. Okay. David is extremely qualified that you vote for your city. And I said this before about Republicans. If you don't like what your Republican has, has done, I said this before, you call them and ask your Republican, right. man or woman. And I say to you out there, you call man and woman from this delegation here in the city of Nashua, and you ask them who they voted for. And if they won't tell you, then they voted for Portsmouth. If they tell you, they voted for Nashua. But if they say, no, we voted for Portsmouth, say, shame on you. Ken? Yes. Are you going to vote for Terry Norelli or David Campbell? Of, what a dumb question. Of course I'm going to vote for David. Okay, that's, that's it. That's good. I just want to be... Now, some, sometimes we need to be clear for the folks what out there. clear? Clear for you. I'm... I'm dizzy, and I'm even more Ken, awake than you. I think. Ken, Ken you're sick. <laughs> you're sick. All right. So, so you're, so you're going to vote. You're going to vote no, for I'm Dave vote Campbell. For, but the the real point is is I have lived for for two years where the Republicans have done awful things. I'm sorry, not necessarily you, because I don't consider you ne necessarily a Republican. But I am awful. Awful things and. It's our, our rates for uh, home, own, and land, et cetera, is going up about 2%. So thank, thank the people, Republicans up there for, for doing that. Now, when I hear these people saying, oh, no, I'm going to vote for Portsmouth, I think to myself, it's just like the Republicans. What is the difference? Your very first vote, who are you going to vote for? Are you going to vote for Nashua, your hometown? Or are you going to vote for Portsmouth? Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to vote for her because she's a lady from another lady. Wow. That is, you know, 25, 30 years ago, if, I, if, if we said today, oh, no, 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 I'm voting for David because he's a man. What's wrong with you? What, what happened? What would you, what, what would you say? If you and I just met and we were being interviewed by one another, and somebody just said to you, oh, no, I'm, I'm voting for this guy because it's a man. I, I, I hope that I wouldn't say that. I don't no, no, I you didn't. Somebody says this to you. What would you say? I would say you're voting for somebody based on their sex. Okay, we got and that. I would, I would ask them a question and see what they said okay, to that. Okay, now, now you got that part. Your city. Put that up. Put that away. Well, we, we know Campbell. That's, we know Campbell. That's, is, is. that's where that's where I have a problem because when I was in the state legislature, I was called a state representative, and what I felt was that while I, I represented people in Nashua, I had to also look at things from a statewide basis, and sometimes there were conflicts. David, David, stop. I don't think I should have this argument with you. David Campbell is qualified to run our state legislature. I'm not saying he isn't. You're from Nashua. I'm not saying he okay, isn't. Okay, let me, I, you're from Nashua. Yeah. Okay? If you had your opportunity to vote for Norelli or Campbell, who would you vote for? I would vote for David Campbell for any number of reasons. Right, because but, he's but certainly not, qualified. Not necessarily because he came from Nashua, not because he's a man, but because I think he has the temperament to be a better speaker God than former me. Speaker Norelli. God help me. Of course, but it's your first vote.
these people use this as an example about men, women, and they're going to vote for another city. This is awful. This is really awful. No, I, I would this not. I would not vote just just based on the no. city issue. Would that would that be the deciding factor for you? Let's let's say David Campbell. Look, you see this guy over here. See this guy over here. Head injury. Yeah. No. 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 The guy that you said was a nutcase who was a Democrat. Uh, Representative Electo. Flaherty. Right. We won't go to one of his name, but let's just say he was from Nashville and he's running for speaker. Yeah. I wouldn't vote for him. All right. So, okay. Okay. I vote for a qualified person. All right. That's that's what I was I looking for. I wouldn't vote for anyone because they're a man or a woman. Obviously, I would not, all right? I have voted for and worked with Maggie Hassan. I know her. Nobody else ran, really ran against her. Of the people who came out, she's the best, and she's a Democrat, all right? Maggie, you want to go Maggie, right down the, the Ma line? Ma Maggie is a Democrat. Fine. Do you want to go right down the line? Ken, what, where are you going with this? I'm lost completely. What's the point? I don't know. Okay, let's move on. I mean, I haven't had... I haven't had my chocolate shake yet. In fact, I, we don't even have water, and I'm, I'm I, all I know. Up. And you know, we've, you know, I just realized we've no, got, no, we no, got, no, no, we, no, we no, got no. this new setup. Where's, where no, no, is our buddy? No, I don't, we know. The hell with him for a while. Listen, no, I just want to say one more thing about that because I think it's really important. And it's not the man and woman thing. Put that aside. And I said, look, if she's your best friend, it doesn't make any difference. This is your city. This is who you vote for. This, this, is, this, this puts a, a, a light upon it. And stop with I don't vote for a person because it's their city, just for their city. No, he's qualified. Who would you vote for? Would you vote for her or him? You've already said him. I would, yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on. All right. What's, what, what else do you have on your on your? Oh, agenda? no, you're going to. No, 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 no. You're going you're gonna to do this for a while. I'm, I am? Yeah, I'm really. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I was going to do this for a you while, were. but now I'm not. <laughs> You'll get to it in a minute. Well, it's on my brain. Let me get it out. Uh, Romney. Ah, uh, yes. Ryan. The mister. Yes, Romney and Ryan. Romney Both and Ryan. lost their home states. And, and Romney, who has a summer home up here, lost yeah. New Hampshire. That's right. So what I figure is... His house and his summer camp are now up for sale. So if you want some very good property, but you're not going to get it cheap because he knows how to make money, okay, it will be available. I promise you that. He will not go back to New Hampshire. Well, he will not go up to Lake Winnipesaukee. Does, doesn't, doesn't he have property in New Hampshire, which yep. he lost, yep. Massachusetts, yep. which he lost, uh, do, it, U, Utah, which I'm not sure. I think he won. Okay. Does he have? He also have some uh, California, Big Sur, right yeah, around yeah, that which, area. Which he lost. Where, where he's building a house with elevators for cars. How's that? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because in that properties are so small, you keep there's no parking. So he's building a house with an elevator for his cars. But we, did, we still didn't get his taxes. I still want to know his taxes. You're going to find out so much more. I, I, well, it's, it's, you know, it, stuff, stuff trickles out, and, and we, we, we really don't know. And sometimes we don't know what's material and what's not material. So it, this is going to be an interesting four years. But go well, ahead. And, uh, and I, I, you know, you've got you to think for a moment. They lost. They, uh, Sarah Palin and... and uh, uh, the last time around with Sarah and, and, and the general there, um, uh, they got more votes than Ryan and Romney. Do you realize that? Well, I, I, I miss Sarah. I, I didn't, I, you know, you I, know I, I, kinda, I miss her. There, there's something about, there's something she about. Was, she, was, she, she was edgy. She was attractive, but she was edgy. What I miss. You know, the pit bull with the lipstick. What I miss is yes. Sarah Palin, not so much because of Sarah Palin, but because we'd see more of Tina Fey. Oh! And, and I, I miss, I, I think some of the things that I think Sarah Palin said probably were actually said by Tina Fey acting as Sarah oh, Palin. Oh, I'm sure. The one I liked about Sarah Palin, though, it was around Thanksgiving, about a month before Thanksgiving. And she, they go and they interview her at a turkey farm where they're killing turkeys. Sounds like a very Republican and thing And the to guy do. is behind 
her at probably 10 or 15 feet, and they're doing the, 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 the right here, the tw up. 20 feet, that yeah. high, and Sarah's saying hi and talking. Right behind her, there's a guy taking a turkey by the neck, sticking it up, grabbing the thing, and then going like this, cutting the throat of the turkey. Then you're seeing the legs move around like that. He takes the turkey down, throws it out, and he grabs another one. So you're watching the guy killing turkeys. I, I, you know, I wonder who the... Uh... I wonder who the anchor was who was interviewing her because I could just see him or her just blanching at that. But the worst one, the worst one, and they all the presidents have these weird ones. Two elephants making love. Okay. Bush is having the interview right behind him. This is true. I'm not kidding you. Very, very awkward. That's you know, you know, well, you know, Bush Bush is still a four letter word. Yeah. I got you know. The, one of the big, <laughs> one of the big mistakes is, what the hell happened to him? He was just president. He has. It, it, that's nobody. It. Nobody wants to talk. In fact, pe Did people. It? People are talking they about. They kept him inside. People are talking about Jeb Bush as a possibility for 2016. He's the smartest of them all. He's I the think. smartest of them all. He's the most reasonable of the. Well, he's certainly of the two brothers. Smartest. He's he's yeah. smarter than, than the other brother. Nobody wants to touch him because his last name is Bush. Well, no, I'm not. not sort of like as though he's a no, Kardashian. They, no, no, no. They interviewed him a lot, and he was very good. But they didn't bring the president out. Who no, was no, the, no. The, I know. I because he's, the, he, he's it's, 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 it would be like bringing Michael Dukakis out in 1992. Oh, Dukakis was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember that tank? Oh, the tank. The yeah. tank was wonderful. He, he was a guy who should not wear hats. That's true. Him and that Kennedy. That was awful. But, but uh, anyway, um, and you're hearing these things, what he's saying, why he lost. And, you know, Republicans go to a mirror, look in the mirror, and say, we lost the election. Obama will be president for another four years. Why don't you just wake up, agree with yourself that this is going to happen, and instead of being vindictive, why in the world don't you try to put out your hand, not necessarily across the aisle, but with Democrats, and try to make friends, try to get things done? Because this vindictiveness is just kumbaya, terrible. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. This is how he this, we, we, we reach across the aisle with a hand of fellowship and brotherhood. We certainly didn't get that this year. That's true. There was a knife there somewhere. A knife. That was, um, it's the most, it was in, in this history of the, of the state of New Hampshire, it was the worst time for, for Republicans in the history. The 200 years or close to it. Yeah. And do you know we yeah, have a, la vie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay with you. But, uh, well, it, it is because what, what will happen after this is it's like, it's like a, a big wave coming in and, and washing a lot of the muck out. Uh, Ryan is still in Washington. Well, no, I, I was, I, I was, mean, I was, Romney no, 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 is still I was, building I was, his house with elevators. I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about the state. I mean, there are a lot of very, what I would call very conservative Republicans were cast out. There are nutcases that, that well, got cast out. There, there were, there, not all of them. No, there were some very reasonable nutcases, but in this case, they were nutcases. Well, am they I, were, was, they was, had was, am I a nutcase? Well, of course you are, being here with me, what do you think? Well, I mean, all right, that's yeah. good. Nice, My God. nice save. I mean, nice you're, save. you know, you're, but you're a nutcase, but the, the... Oh, it's nice to belong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> One of these days we might get yeah. together and belong, I mean, to something. No, but... but no I, group wants us. You know, but 100, 120, uh, I think 120 Republicans... Were, were were cast out. I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if the ship. No, it was. It was like, 90, because there were a number that didn't run again, but, not quite as as bad as 2010. But, a whole lot of people got cast out, and what this I hope will mean is that the Republican Party at the state level, will do some serious soul searching. The problem is, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Well, and, and also, uh, we, were, I were just, we were just talking about women, voting for women. Let's put that aside. No matter who becomes uh, the Speaker of the House, we have a line of women 
that, that a strong, that a good, the best of the candidates, bright. And I think us men up here in New Hampshire, and by the way, no woman can get elected without men votes. Uh, that's just the way it is. No man can get elected without women's votes. We know that. We just saw this yep. take place, okay? Yep. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. But I think we ought to have, and we should probably start, this, the less sexist state in the United States. How can anyone argue with that? How? How can you? Is there a state that has more women? We're the least sexist state in the United States of America. How would you... That's good and positive, wouldn't you say so? Well, I, I, we, we, see, we seem to have uh, most of our leadership in the state is, uh, except for the state senate, at, at the moment is pro probably going to be going to be women. The house may be up in up in the air. Um, I'm not sure I I'm would. I'm talking about the leaders. No, they're, no, they're, they're, but know, but, I, but I'm not sure. The last I, second, what do you need? I, I, okay, well, let me tell you what I mean. What I'm saying is, I'm not sure that. Uh, female leadership necessarily means that sexism within the state has gone away. I didn't say that, David. I am well, saying... Well, that, that, that's why I'm know, saying you, know, you can't say it's you, the you, least you sexist know, state you know, in David, the country. Yeah, you can. And you know how you know... Well, you can, you, but yeah, you may no, be no. wrong. You know how you can and be right about that? How can you? What, who are your politicians? All men? No. At this particular point, they all happen to be women. If we were sexist up here, there may be several women, okay? They're all women. So I am trying to say something positive for the state of New Hampshire. Okay. And if you say this, and, and yeah, will sexism always exist? Of course it will, like okay. racism always exists. But that's not the point. Up here, both men and women should be proud uh, of that honor. It is an honor, because if you were to take the United States and go around and say, which is the less sexist state? Okay, so it would have to be New Hampshire. What other state would it be? I, I, I think you're doing apples and oranges here. I think you're doing apples, apples and, and apple, oranges. Apple, apples and oranges. Because what, what I hear you saying is because New Hampshire has female political leadership, uh. which is fine. I mean, that's, 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 that's a good thing. I think that's, a, that's an important and a good thing. Because then the state of New Hampshire is the least sexist state in the United in the, in, States in the country, and I don't think you can. I, I don't think that the one necessarily leads to the other. Oh, okay. What we should and, and give no, you the fact. What, what, one okay, last what thing. Is one, one la what one, is no, sexism? One last, what is sexism? One last thing, and I'll answer that. Go ahead. I think it's kind of interesting that two men are having this discussion. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had a woman or two talking about this with us? I think the women who are watching this show. You know, should say, hey, there we go, guys. Finally, you know, you're starting, you know, uh, New Hampshire's done a very good job. We're very positive about this. We're not negative about this. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting to me that you're having a hard time when I say to you, we're the least sexist state in the United States. That just happens to be true. And what, so I ask you, what is sexism? Sexism, in, in my humble opinion, is uh, making decisions based primarily or significantly on sex in an inappropriate way. The, what I, how, many, uh, how, how many New Hampshire CEOs are female? How many New Hampshire CEOs lead trade unions? Uh, sorry, New Hampshire females lead trade unions. Uh, go down the line. Those are the kinds of things that I think would be more indicative of the state of quote unquote sexism in the state of New Hampshire. You know, you know something? Uh, I know I'm under the weather because I have a cold, but that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Look, sexism really does, it starts to, to cure this. It comes from, in racism, it comes from both ways, top and bottom. It's really when the top starts saying, wait a minute, because the bottom is saying, wait a minute, this is not fair, that it comes together. And usually when it comes together is when there is a racism, which we call sexism to, to a degree, takes place. You're a woman, forget it. You're not smart enough. When you come to politics, all right, politics, I'm sorry, just happens to be one of the really important subjects. When it comes to politics, there is no state in the United States that has more women. None. We are it. This is historic. And if we have a woman who is the Speaker of the House, 
That's it. Are the two more women and you would have you would have the Senate and guess what? That would be it. This would be like 50 years ago when it was all men. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could say that we are the least sexist state in the United States. Politically. Right. How's that? All right. So that by by following that same uh, logic, we are one of the least sexist at uh, least racist countries politically because we have a, a an African American president. Is that right? Probably. Well, I'm not sure I'd, I'd make that. Well, move. I'll tell you what. You try to, especially in the my, during, my, you know, give, my, given my what's going is, on. My son is out in China. I got news for you. If he decides to run for political office over there, what do you think they'll do? Slice and dice him. Why? Well, I, I you can't I, do it. I suspect you'd have a difficult. This time. This is the United States. You can come over here and do it. As as we know from from Mr. O'Flaherty, who yeah. was, was elected in Ward Five. Uh, interesting, interesting discussion, uh, and of course you're wrong. What, el what else do you What else do you have for All us? Right, cause I'm, I'm, oh, I got a I got a story. It's going to take a couple minutes. You know that I was hit from behind. A car hit me from behind. I'm driving home, and I'm driving my truck, and so I, your car got buggered by another well, car. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm driving in, in Concord on the main street, and I just stop and whack so hard from behind it breaks the seat. So the guy gets out, and he's really a nice guy. Oh, geez, I was looking at the window. I'm sorry. You know, and he takes a look at the plate. He says, oh, no, you're from the state, and I'm working for the state. Oh, am I in trouble? I said, no, you're not in trouble. So he says, okay, relax. So he's got an insurance company. i got an insurance company. So we, in today, you don't write it down anymore, folks. You take pictures of the guy's license. This is how it works. Oh, yeah. Everybody's taking pictures. It's interesting. You know, oh, you got a pencil there where I can? No, you don't have to. Let me take a picture. I'll email it to you. So it is, takes place. So I call my insurance company, and they say, oh, that's good. We'll take care of it all, and we'll charge them for doing that. And I said, no, 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 no. I don't want you to do it. I want to call them, meaning his insurance company, and have his insurance company do it. I call there. It's foreign to them. What? What are you doing? I said, I was hit by your client. And he says, you're hit? by a client. I said, yeah, I was hit by the, your, your client. Oh, yeah, I think that was Massachusetts or Vermont. And I said, excuse me? I was hit by your client. Uh-oh, I have a feeling we're going to find something out. Who was it? Gene Chandler. Wow. All right, let's, well, why don't we just take this as a, as a, ladies and gentlemen, the Speaker of the House for the Republicans, the minority, well, the, is, the minority leader is Gene Chandler. Chandler. And by the way, uh, uh, what's that on the back? <laughs> oh, it, that, for for it, a good time, call. Oh no, wait a minute. Oh, no. all right. Okay. So anyway, that's that's Gene Chandler. So okay. that's who will be running for the minority leader. Gene. But he was also he also was Speaker of the House. Yes, he he has been Speaker of the House. He's he's been been around for about thirty years. And you want to know something? I think everybody likes that guy. So anyway, I yeah. get hit. I call up their insurance company, and they they don't know who I am. So I say, look. Uh, I got hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're from Vermont or something. And I said, lady, stop. You're an insurance company. I'm a person who got hit. Do you know who I am? Well, uh, yeah, you're from, uh, let me see, oh, New Hampshire. I says, okay. You got me. Uh, I says, you know, the problem is a lot of insurance companies get themselves in a lot of trouble because people don't pay attention. And it's because I'm on commerce, which is banking and insurance. So I said, okay, I'll let that go. So she gives me a number, which is now my code number. Every time you call someone, you have to have the code number. So I call, this is Hartford Insurance. I'm going to tell you it's Hartford because you can read it right here, Hartford. So I call Hartford, and I don't get the guy. I leave my code number. He calls me back. He doesn't get me. I call him back twice. He doesn't call me. And then I get two of these things in the mail saying, you haven't called me, but I've been trying to call you. So finally, after weeks, I finally got him. And I said, look, the guy hit. Oh, yeah, OK, all right, you want a car? Go down here, take a place. You send another guy down there. It's being fixed at the time. At this moment, it's being fixed. Your car is being fixed. Being fixed. This is what I get today. You ready? Claim it, Kenneth Gidge. Currently, your claim remains open and unsolved. 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 In order to complete, complete the process of this claim, we found it necessary to obtain additional information. 
awaiting receipt of signed proof of loss. What the hell is that? I lost, and I, all right. Awaiting receipt of your damage estimate. Awaiting receipt of medical information. Awaiting receipt for uh, police report. We don't have a police report. Awaiting receipt for investigation. So what am I doing, investigating myself? You're waiting for all these receipts? The problem is my car at the present time is in the shop. It's being fixed as we speak. And by the way, I asked them for a full-size car, and they gave me a car that goes 140, and I've done 120. Anyway, so here we go. So I'm in commerce, which is banking and insurance, and you wonder why your insurance rates go up. It's dumb stuff like this. And dumb people who can't take a message, they can't relate that there's been an accident, and they come up and they try to pass laws and, and your insurance goes up. It's stupid things like this. My car is being fixed. And I, oh, by the way, they sent me two today. I got two of these. You did? Yeah. That's in case you lose the first one. Oh, oh wait a minute. Now, I'm the one who got hit, right? Okay. Allegedly, yes. Yeah. Well, I got hit from behind, of course. Okay. I just one more thing. New Hampshire law requires the following statement to appear on this form. All right? Any person who... Uh, with purpose to uh, injure, defraud, or deceive any insurance company, files a statement of claim containing false, incomplete, misleading information is subject to going to jail. I'm the guy who got hit. But you know, you know that's, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. No, no. I'm talking about that statement. Yeah, I know. I don't like it. I'll get rid of it. I get it. This is what I think about. I, I'm sorry, Hodford. Up to this point, I really like the company, but this is really bizarre. I mean, they're asking me for things I can't give. That's typical. Oh, uh, investigation report. Excuse well, me? Did, didn't you file a police report, an accident report? All you have to do is file with your insurance company on state company. It's no, no big accident an accident. They'll file a police report for a fender bender. Really? No. Well, you do in Massachusetts. To. I know that. No, you don't. Oh, yeah. I, I, you get a fender bender, someone just runs any offender, you got to call a cop? Not a cop, but an accident report. In other words, you fill out a form that you get from the police department, the registry, and, and it's considered an accident report. For what? Somebody who just bangs into you because and what it's it, all What it does set? is it has all the information on there, and, and it's the formal way that... And you, uh, you want to know something? There we go again. Why your insurance rates go up. What a stupid waste that is. For a fender bender. Now, an accident where the car can't be moved, eh, I understand that. But a fender bender, so they want the police to do their work so the insurance company gets it for a fender bender in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, that's my insurance story. Oh, and by the way, uh, Go ahead, you, you talk, because i got, a, I got one more story. Go what's going on with the Liquor Commission? What's, what's happening? Ah. You, and, and, you know, just, just to, to set this up for folks who haven't been listening, uh, Ken was appointed by the Speaker as, as one of the minority members on the Special House Committee to look into the Liquor Commission and make recommendations as to what, uh, how the Liquor Commission should be restructured. And the report has just come out, and Ken is going to tell us about it. Go for it. Well... <clears throat> My pot up there has been, it's a $600 million a year industry. Yeah, they got some problems, but guess what? Every company has problems. Nothing big, nothing major, but you give something to politicians, and guess what? Politicians cannot not do anything. They have to do something. They, you can't give something to a politician and not do anything. Well, or at least it, they have to appear to be doing anything. Something, if not Oh, no, they, these guys did something. They're trying to tell them how to chill wine. They're trying to tell them how to stock right. shelves. What, what's what's the bottom it. line on this? What, what's, what is the proposal from the commission, and what's likely to happen to it? Well, it all depends, because I'm now the majority. It all depends where, how far I want to go with us. I, I can block, I must not block it, but argue against a lot of it. But some of it I can understand. They did lose uh, $100,000 worth of wine. They didn't stolen. They, it's in a warehouse someplace, divided. So, And uh, as you know, we lost the main commissioner. I don't, don't want to mention his name. Yeah, he, he was quit, he fired, and, or whatever. So there's only two commissioners. And now they're 
keep talking about three commissioners, and now they only want one commissioner. And, and I said, well, you're going to have three people, but you can say commissioner, what, assistant, and assistant to the assistant. I mean, that's how it's going to go. And so that's basically what it is, a warehouse, uh, um, warehousing, prices inside the warehouse, which nobody has any idea what that's about. And also, the one that I absolutely went nuts over, and that was compliance. Uh, investigator goes into a bar and sees a bartender who's drunk. Is this going to be a priest, a rabbi, and a minister? No. Joke? Okay, no. all right, all right. But I got one about a squirrel and ducks. Ooh, okay. I like that. Well, if, if after we get through with this. Goes in, if an investigator goes into a bar and a bartender is drunk, yep. this is an extreme thing, but it's true. You have to give a written warning before you can do anything. Really? Yeah. So it's that. So I was. I mean, you on, can't shut. You can't say to the bartender. Uh, you know, you can't close the doors. Sir, you're all close alone. the doors. You're all alone. You know. So, and in fact, if he was breaking the rule by being drunk and breaking another rule by serving a minor, it's still he needs one of each. And I thought that that was ridiculous. Uh, well, they don't, because I've had a couple bars, one right here in Nashville, big nightclub in the six, uh, 70s, early 70s called Barnaby's, sat 500 people, a lot of people, and we had inve investigators come in all the time, and they were always nice. And of course, we worked hard not to make sure underage people were drinking. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not, what are you going to lose a license over that? Yeah. So, so they were pretty good, but they didn't, the people there didn't get it. So it's interesting. I'm on the committee for compliance, and they, the Republican is, and I are supposed to get together. Well, the report's out. Uh, I didn't get on the compliance thing. So, but I must say that we were worried because. Uh, there was an amendment that made the state liquor stores uh, have the ability to run like businesses, which means that they can act like businesses. If they've got a store that's not performing, they can close it. I mean, all sorts of things. like They can enlarge. They can do anything they want to as long as they're making money. And they made $20 million last year for us. This year, it's 14.5% up. It's another $40 million this year. Uh, it's unbelievable how it's doing really well. And my whole thing was, our, you know, do no harm. All right, bottom line, uh, governor, you know, uh, there is, there's going to be a Democratic governor succeeding, succeeding a Democratic governor. The House has turned over. The Democrats will be in control. Do you see any significant legislation coming out of this committee? Well, the interesting part of that, the amendment was by Maggie Hassan. The amendment that was passed that was no, an issue? No, no, it was, yes, which, and... I made it very clear at the very beginning when her name was brought up that this is not politics. And if you think you're going to bring it out as politics, then they hired the wrong person. I don't want politics, and I don't want it a, a, a uh, witch hunt, okay? And uh, the uh, chairperson uh, was wonderful, and uh, she handled it just terrific. That's Republican Lynn Ober. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really uh, very smart, uh, very very tough lady. Let me tell you, I, I went to the speaker and I said, boy, is she tough? He says, I know. I mean, she's tough with him too. I mean, this is mm -hmm. O'Brien. Uh, but I've got to thank Mr. O'Brien for, for getting me on that. So anyways, it was her amendment that made the state have the ability to make a lot of money. But with making a lot of money, you get a couple problems that need to be cleaned up. That's it. All right. $600 million a year. Likely any changes coming out of this? Any significant changes? I think probably the big change will be one, uh, one uh, commissioner. But the reason why they had three was po political. You got three watching, one okay. watching each other, OK? All right. But you had a main commissioner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they each, it was divided up. And it's really run pretty well. All right. Uh, got a couple of questions. We've got, we're moving on. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. A couple of things going on. Supreme Court in New Hampshire just heard a case uh, about the only person on death row in New Hampshire yesterday and whether or not his uh, conviction should be overturned or his sentencing should be overturned. What do you think about the death penalty? Yes or no? Uh, the answer is no, and if he's put to death, I will 
leave New Hampshire and go to Massachusetts until the execution is over. I, I don't think... Uh, well, that's about three minutes. That's right. Well, what the hell? I mean, you're killing a guy. I could spend three minutes getting out of the state that's killing somebody. I, and don't misunderstand me. I, I've got a minute. A, He's going to leave the state for three minutes during the, the execute... I well, I'm not going to say that they're this. executing him. I'm taking off for three minutes. No, I might go down to Boston or something like Have that. Have a drink? And yeah, well, no, I don't drink, but uh, uh, no. Uh, the, let me clarify that, though. Because Please, go ahead. people think this is funny. Unlike some people, I, I welcome people explaining their situation. Thank you. You're welcome. Unlike me, letting you explain? Nice, no names. Nice go, go, tied, go, by go, the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, look. If anybody did anything to my family, it's real simple. The police better find him before I do. Okay. Okay? Okay. If I find the person, uh, hopefully I would not destroy them if they killed one of my family members because I'm not sure what I would do. Right. But once that person was caught, game over. I expect that person to spend the rest of their life in jail, and if they don't, all right, come out, then I'd be very upset. So I'm not for the death penalty. Hey, I'll tell you what, you ever want to get rid of something, and they go into jail, and they kill somebody, just say $10,000. God, every inmate in the jail would want to kill anybody for $10,000. You know what I mean? And here you have it on television, Representative Ken Gidge soliciting Murder in prison. It, you it, heard it here first. It, excuse me. It, I'm soliciting murder. They're going to execute just, you, somebody. You, no, you just were you're talking. Wait, wait a minute. You just, you, were talking about, you just were talking about giving somebody ten thousand dollars to kill somebody I, else. I, but I, if I wanted to get rid of somebody, ah, I that. this and is sort of like, like the, no, I, the, I the I Nixonian, the Nixonian do, approach. I would, I would do that. No, we could do it, but no, it would be wrong. Are you for the death penalty? no. Well, it's just. But, I, but I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm not against it for necessarily for ethical and moral reasons. I'm against it because I don't think it serves as a deterrent. It is tremendously expensive, the whole process, and we would be better served by putting people away if they are dangerous. Well, we we, uh, we, we there's mo there's there's money that that in in statistics that that say that you're absolutely right. First of all. Uh, it can cost up to six million dollars for twenty years. So, in other words, he's the six million dollar man. Well, he 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 could be. I mean, it could could be shorter term here. Hey, if you want to take him and send him out of the state and do that, that's that's up to you. But as far as it goes in the state, I won't be here. And you know, there's you know, there's two reasons that I'm very happy that I wasn't alive for. One is Adolf Hitler. Yeah. And one was dropping of the bombs. Really? Yep. Now, now, what, what was the, uh, why the bombs? Mass murder at its, at its absolute worst. They did it twice, that's it, and it's just, it'll never stop. Wars never stop anyway. Well, you know I, that. I mean, remember, you know, firebombing of Dresden probably killed more people than either Hiroshima or Nagasaki, firebombing of to Tokyo. I mean, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, uh, mass murders and that kind was of thing. hey, you know you got to you got to stop. I know uh, I know people over there and some of the stories. You know, you, I got friend. I had to go to Vietnam because I had a hearing problem and I had cancer in the leg, so I couldn't go. Um, but I, some of the stories that they were telling me, you had were, can were awful. cancer in the leg, cancer. Cancer. That's what, what. What kind of in cancer? In the bone. Bone. It was cancer? a bone cancer. Do you, do you, did you have to get your leg cut uh, off? No I, no, I didn't get it cut off. I have a big scar. Would you like to see it? I'll show yeah, it to you. Well, yeah. Not right now. Not, I was better. Okay. I'd show right. everybody. All right. Uh, uh, so, so it's like. It's how about like, yourself? Do you, 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 you think I, I didn't want to be around with Hitler? Well, oh, I thought you were going to ask me why I didn't go to Vietnam. Why didn't you go to Vietnam? I was uh, deferred. I was one Y because I weighed 300 pounds. You rascal. You weighed 300 pounds? I weighed, actually, it was probably, I think it was 275 or something, 270, and, and it was... Yeah, it, but you're nine feet tall, for God's sake. Well, no, I, I'm 6'3", but I was, and I've always been heavy all my life. It's only been the last four or five years that I've been my svelte self. Um, and uh, at some point, the 1Y automatically turned into 4F. 
and I. Uh, it was it was winding down anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it was really winding down. So for I for both I, of us. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I I. Uh, you know, I, I I have I have mixed feelings. I mean, I certainly. There's no way in the world that I would have wanted to go to Vietnam. And at the same time, I look at folks of my generation, uh, men and women, who have served and, and were in the military and, and whether or not they went anywhere. And, and I do, there, there's something there. It's not so much that I feel a little bit ashamed, but it's, I feel uneasy. About, For what? About the fact that I didn't. That you didn't go? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to go. I mean, who the hell, who the hell wants World, to go to Vietnam? In World War II, yeah. my father couldn't see. Yeah. He's, he glasses his sticks. Yeah. So he got on a merchant marine right. ship, okay? Right. There were people who committed suicide in World War II because they couldn't get into the service. Yeah. All right? And I can tell you stories about that because, you know, we know or knew people of, of that age. But Vietnam... Awful, just absolutely awful. And, and I'm Should not, have and never taken place. I, I agree and, with you. And, and, I agree with you. And I would have gone. I just yeah. it's not. I, I didn't choose all this stuff. I didn't shoot myself in the foot or right. what 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 or I, eight nine pies or a, a day or hey we had a we hey, let, let, is we it that time we, we had two minutes. All right, go ahead. Hurry up, something happy. Well, no, I just, happy, something something happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Beautiful yes, we're, people. We're going to have beautiful people at our house for Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, I didn't get invited. I I gonna have, we're going to have beautiful people in our house for a happy thing. We're going to have two dogs. We're going to have the, the new fence, the five-foot fence, put up in the backyard so the dogs can just go run around the, the, and zoom. The dogs. I don't get invited. Okay. Uh, all right. So oh, we're, hey. You yeah, know what? Yeah. The, I just hey, reminded wait, come me. Come on. we got 30 seconds. Hurry up. Are we going to do a show hey. next Thursday? Yeah. Uh, what's next Thursday? Thanksgiving. Ah, we'll do it a couple days before. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Hey. Hey. I'm, I'm Dave Robbins. Thanks. Ken Gidge. Take Put care your now. hand up. All right, okay, good. How?